Tim, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. Hi, Jonas. Um, I'll take the halves in turn, really. Um, obviously, it's a good result, but a lot of people still talk, I think, about Arsenal against deep blocks and whether this was a convincing response to that. A good start to the first half, but it felt a bit like maybe Arsenal fell back into some of that cautiousness on the ball. Um, is that the, the impression you got of the first half? I think the first half that we play up to a lot of good situations on the final third, uh, where we are missing the areas to create a little bit more of the of the clear cut chances. Uh, but it's a very very tight low block we're playing against. I don't know exactly how many corners we create in that half. If that could be 13, 14 corners, uh, which obviously is a is a major part of that as well. Um, I do think that when you're playing against a low block, it's very important to understand that the reward does seldom come in the first half. It more often comes in the in the second half, uh, and we needed to keep the the patience and we needed to keep the quality uh, to be able to make that happen. And uh, that was enough to do that today. And in the second half, um, you know, the, the goal comes from. Some real quality, a great ball by Kim. Felt like I saw that diagonal ball to Beth Mead a lot, uh, particularly in the first half of the second half. I wondered how much that goal kind of related to anything you might have said at half time, but at the same time, it didn't feel like that goal opened the game up a lot. And I wondered how much maybe the international break played into that, whether the nerves played into that, and just kind of what you said at, at half time and how that related to the second half. And that was definitely one thing we spoke about in the um, in the half time as a way of we stayed a lot either that we changed the point of attack by creating a one v one or two v one situation over on the other side, or we broke through through wide overloads and we said that in order to find another way of as well attacking their box, it can be when we set back to be able to attack on this diagonal box because we could see their full backs were starting to switch off. So it was nice to see that that could uh, come off. I think you're right with saying that this was probably the most difficult um, to say conditions for us so far in the seasons, being we had an international break with a lot of question marks with player availability. Players have been working extremely hard on an individual level to be able to be ready um, to play this game here. Also from a squad depth perspective, this is as shallow as we have been this season because also of the availability for players being away at the Gold Cup. So we know that that was going to be a factor against a Tottenham that has, a, has almost a full squad um, available. I do think... We could have finished the game a little bit stronger, uh, but you could see that all that work had, had taken its toll. Um, and I said to the players after, even if I'm not happy with the way that we played the last 15 minutes in the game, because I think we think too much about the scoreline, no one is going to remember those 15 minutes at the end of the season. And you need to take smart decisions. And... We're not the only football team in the world that's going to have spells in a football game where, where we're not dominant um, in, in, in every aspect of the game all the time. And then you still need to ride out that storm. Uh, and we do today. And it's really important. And we keep the clean sheet. We get three points. And that's the main point. Thank you. Thank you. Could you give us an idea of how many question marks there were for you today? Like that. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> I don't want to provide that more. But but to say it was in, uh, it was more than one. Um, and in terms of, I guess players who can change the picture, like Kim did for the goal. Um, I think Victoria and Caitlin did it quite often in the first half as well. How important are those players when you're playing against a team like this, where you? Do you maybe have to be a bit more patient when you have players that can just switch things in an instant like that? Yeah, I think, of course, individual qualities is really, really important. And you can see that on the goal that we score, for example. But it's also the connection and understanding between those players. Because without that, the individual quality is not worth anything the way we play. So, of course, the way Kim protects the ball, the way she can scan and see the opportunity to play that diagonal pass with pinpoint precision 
Without that, the goal is not possible. But if Beth Mead doesn't wait for that pass and position and attack that space and have that quality on the first touch, the goal is not possible. And still, the goal would not happen if not Alessia as a nine stays central in that moment. If she would have been losing patience and been somewhere else over in that moment, that goal wouldn't have happened. Potentially would have been a penalty. Uh, but um, given how many penalties we, we get, I don't trust that too much. But that those are the things that need to come together in order to, um, to score a goal. Catherine? Um, you mentioned there about Alessia, a lot of kind of been made of um, what she brings kind of off the ball uh, as well as her goal scoring ability. But did we kind of see that goal scoring instinct from her today to, to be in the right place at the right time to, to make the crucial difference? Yeah, we, we spoke about that in, in the last um, block before the international window. In, in that's an area to, uh, to improve, and I think she was doing that very, very well today. And she gets a reward as well. Uh, it looks like an easy goal to, to score, but it's an impossible goal to score if you're not in that position. Jeremy, let's go. Yeah, and it's a back-to-back 60,000 crowds here. I mean, it's spectacular. What were you thinking seeing another full stadium again? I was thinking about a quote from Dennis Bergkamp when he said that you don't support a team only for a player or for only for history or only for trophy. You go and support a team because that's where you found an environment where you feel that you belong. And that's what makes me extremely proud of being able to say that I think we've, we've found a, a, a place where more than 60,000 people feel that they belong and they feel that this is their home, this is where they come and want to support their football team. And that is very special, and that is something that we need to keep um, <clears throat> very, very much alive and keep building on. Um, but, but I think that's, that's a special feeling uh, that we have been able to create that together. Thanks. Sure. Hi, Yannis. Um, you spoke to Catherine there about Ruto's role. Um, she's very selfless in terms of her work rate. Got the reward today. Do you want her to continue dropping and help building up play, or do you want her to be a more selfish number nine? Um, as a nine, one of your main roles for the team is to score goals to it. So for me, that's not selfish. That's, that's being in, in, in contributing what you need to do. Our forwards are point players. They need to contribute with points. Uh, for it. That's for our nine, for our ten, for our two wide forwards, and that's n never going to change. So for me, I don't look like it that with selfless or selfish for it. I see it how well do we perform the role that we have in the team, and a really important role for our number nine is to score goals. And secondly, um, you played Arsenal, sorry, you played Spurs in the Conti Cup and then before Christmas. What progress have you seen? Than make or perhaps not make compared to the last time we played them? I think they obviously signed a lot of players since we played them the last time. Uh, <coughs> almost five players, I think. So, of course, they're, that's, they're really invested in their squad. Uh, you can see that. I think the game was the same. Uh, I think they defended. I think they had a very defensive mentality. Uh, they do that well, uh, but nothing changed. Uh, it was the same thing. The only thing that changed now was that we were able to, to be more effective with our goal-scoring opportunities. And like I said, after the last game against them in the league, I think it's a game that we win absolutely the majority of the times playing. And I think it's the same way uh, with the game that we played today. It was just nice that we got to win today. Thank you. A couple more. One in the middle. Hi, and it's just a bit more on Beth and Alessia particularly together. I think it's 10 goals combined in the WSL this season. How crucial is it to have to just play together and linking up well for the success of the club? I mean, key relationships takes time to, to develop, and but one aspect that sometimes is overlooked in... Um, in professional football is that when players are able to keep that relationship also when they go away on the national team that that means that they don't have to to stop start that relationship they can keep on building on that 
all the time. And Beth and Alessia, they're a prime example of that, that they can continue to work on their relationship both at club level and national team level, which I think makes it a little bit easier when you have uh, just a couple of days preparation time after an international break. Congratulations on three points today. Your team laid a really incredible high press today from probably, as you said, the last sort of 50 minutes it maybe dropped. Was that the way that you set your team up today because they were facing a low block or is that what you want to take into more games in the future? We want to have the ball. Um, we, uh, we, we want to uh, be dominant both in the way we... Um, we have the ball ourselves, but also which spaces and time we allow the opposition to do. Uh, we know that Tottenham also are looking to play out from the back, and we didn't want that to happen uh, here today. So uh, we needed to be aggressive. We needed to bring them to a place where they were forced to turn over. Most of the times we were successful. Sometimes you could see what they were trying to accomplish as, as well. So it was really a game of margins and angles in that where we needed to be brave in order to put enough pressure on the ball so they couldn't come in behind us or out on the other side. Last couple of good ones here. Hi, Jonas. Um, not many other of your sort of clubs could sell out a 60,000 seat stadium like Arsenal do currently. When you think about how, how tight it is at the top of the table, do you think the Emirates could be a marginal game you have, especially with the game coming up against Leicester soon? I definitely think that <clears throat> the culture that we have here at Emirates is a really, really big uh, factor that can be maybe even more important long term for, for Arsenal women because of the way that it, it should be able to, to both drive sporting success from it, but also, of course, to, to generate revenue and therefore investing um, in the team to, to generate more sporting success. I'm so happy that they put one more game at the Emirates. It would have been really sad to sit here and say that this was the last time we were going to the Emirates this, uh, this season. So we are looking forward very much to that. Uh, I hope our fans are as well. There is a lot of time now till that game. So uh, hopefully the tickets, they, uh, they sell fast and uh, many. Last one here. From and I was wondering if you have to write a recipe for the club and how to get back to back sort of 60,000 sell ups. What would be some of the, the factors? What have been some of the factors that have led the club to being able to, to sell out the Emirates twice in a row? I got that question before the game as well. I think one thing that is really important is the one club mentality, it's the investment in both the men's and the women's team uh, across the board, the executives, uh, and, and that drips down through the whole organization. And that makes that we take good and ambitious decisions um, and, and we have that backing. And without that, I don't think it would have been possible. So to have a whole club behind it, really, really important. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you guys.